This was one of the hardest lists I think I've ever had to put together. In fact, it was so difficult that I had to put in like 10 honorable mentions in this top list of 30. So it's actually a list of 40 and I could have easily made it a list of 50. So this video, who are the top 30 most iconic long haired male characters in movies? And before you jump in the comments saying I should have included this actor or this celebrity, I just wanna clarify, this is a list of the fictional characters, not the real life celebrity. And so I also didn't include any animated characters because that would have just doubled the size of the list and it was already hard enough to put this together. So anyways, let's get into it. <laughs> What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel where we talk all about the science of grooming and men's style. Also love helping men rock their masculine manes. If you're growing your hair or beard out and you maybe felt like you're going at it alone or you're getting pushback from people in your life to cut your hair, hit up the Mannered Manes Facebook group because all of us, while we might be on different parts of our hair growth journey, we all are going through it together. So if you're feeling unmotivated to keep going, pop into the group, say what's up, and they'll lift your spirits. There's a link in the description to join. All right, let's move on. Definitely drop a comment and let me know who I missed because I'm sure that I missed a lot of guys. Also, spoiler warning, in my attempt to explain the character and all of their awesomeness, I go into a little bit of kind of their role in the movie or the television show. So if you don't want any spoilers, you haven't seen the show, you haven't seen the movie, and you don't want me to give anything away, this is your spoiler warning to skip over the character. Okay, so having said that, let's start with number 30. Okay, so coming in at number 30, we have Shah Rukh Khan's character out of Bollywood, Don in Don 2. In the opening fight scenes of the movie, Don shows up in all his flow and epic main glory, just effing his enemies up, kicking ass and taking names. In my opinion, in this role, his long hair symbolizes like a really bad boy look like a rebel, but a guy who's calm, cool, and collected in the face of his enemies and always waits for the right moment to take action, which is why I gave him some number 30 spot. So the best way to style this hair is in a half high ball, and you can rock it whether you have wavy, curly, or straight hair types for this look. So coming in at number 29, we have Dewey Finn as played by Jack Black in School of Rock. And this guy rocks, <laughs> pun intended. So the reason I love this character is obviously, you know, it's rock and roll, but it's also showcases that you don't have to be a warrior or a demigod to rock long hair. You can be a heavy set guy with a receding hairline who still loves to rock out and let it flow. So I just think it's a really good example of how long hair can be for any man. So coming in at number 28, we have Jax Teller in Sons of Anarchy. So as a vice president and later president of his outlaw motorcycle club, Sam Crow, which is actually a fictional representation of the real life Hell's Angels. You know, Jack's character is played by Charlie Hunnam and he deals with love, with brotherhood, with loyalty, with betrayal, and with redemption. And it was an amazing show and Jax's hair is about as bad boy biker gang as it comes. So he styles his hair in several ways in the show, but two of the most common are the slicked back or the off center part. And so it's a great option, especially for guys who have fine hair. Coming in at number 27, we actually have a three-way tie because they're all from the same movie. So it's a three-way tie between Chingachgook, Uncas, and Hawkeye in Last of the Mohicans. So this is a classic movie and it took place in the late you know, 1750s during the French and Indian War. And all three of these characters have phenomenal long hair. And Chingachgook proves that you can have a balding hairline and still rock long hair like a warrior. And a quick aside note real quick about you know Native American tribes. I don't wanna lump them all together because they all have different beliefs, but what hair means to them is very, very important. And it's a big part of their culture. Some tribes believe it's an extension of nature itself. Others believe that their hair is connected to their nervous system and it gives, you know, gives them strength. Many tribes also believe that the cutting of their hair by their oppressors is a symbol of submission and defeat and it's one of the biggest disrespects that you can bestow upon them. So this list really wouldn't be complete without paying tribute to our long-haired Native American brothers. So I had to include these guys on the list because 
their their hair is awesome. Okay, so moving on to number 26, we have Prince Jingham in the Netflix original Marco Polo. So although many of the characters did have epic long hairstyles, including Marco Polo, the main character, in my opinion, Prince Jingham's flow was the most epic. So during Kublai Khan's reign of the Mongol Empire, Prince Jingham was Kublai Khan's second son and the true born heir to the throne. Although I'm not sure how fully accurate his representation was for like Mongolian warriors because most of the warriors actually shaved their heads historically in like really creative ways, similar to how Kublai Khan was portrayed in the show. But nonetheless, I think Prince Jingham's flow was rocking. It was one of the best ones out of all the characters in Marco Polo. Coming in at number 25, we have Jaguar Paul, who was the Mayan hunter in the movie Apocalypto. So after his village was raided by like neighboring warriors, they were taking slaves for like human sacrifices. And Jaguar Paul was able to hide his pregnant wife and son in a well before being captured. But the rest of the movie, he's basically just out for survival, right? He's doing everything he can to make it back to them and it's a story of a survivor it's the story of a hunter it's a story of a father of a true mayan warrior and so his long hair is just epic and it's most likely historically accurate as well if you look at some drawings or carvings or representations of how mayans looked in the past so let's move on to number 24. so at number 24 we have conan the barbarian so whether we're talking about the 1982 version played by arnold schwarzenegger or the 2011 version with jason momoa you know, the long hair with the shorter side curtains sort of on the front, as you can see, both of the, those characters had that, is a really strong and masculine look. And, you know, Conan took no prisoners when he's trying to avenge the man who murdered his father. But his flow stayed epic the whole entire time. His hair looked amazing. And this is also a really great look if you guys have like wavy or starting to get slightly curly hair. Moving on, coming in at number 23, we have Tristan Ludlow, who is played by Brad Pitt in the movie Legends of the Fall. So this movie is a big inspiration for a lot of guys who are growing their hair out. But basically, Tristan was raised in the wild and was very well versed in Native American culture. And he was the really adventurous type. And he's also a man of honor and duty because he reluctantly goes off to war to protect his younger brother, who, you know, he ultimately fails, but he scalps many enemies along the way in World War One, And, you know, feeling extreme guilt for the loss of his brother, he comes back home, you know, tries to redeem himself in as many ways as he can. But, you know, if you have straight and wavy hair with a fine texture, sort of like how Brad Pitt did in this movie, this is a great look you can, you can strive for. I think the most amazing thing in this movie, though, is ultimately he dies at an old age, like fighting a bear, which is so fitting for his character. You know, he was born in the wild and he dies in the wild. It was a good death. <laughs> so at number 22, we have Rambo. So this Vietnam War vet was out for blood. And even though probably most veterans from Vietnam had shorter military cuts, I think they chose to give Rambo long hair just to symbolize like rebellion um, and strength. And if there's one thing that we learned from watching Rambo, it's that rocking the long mane with a headband just looks pretty epic. So moving on to number 21, I chose Dastan from Prince of Persia. And actually, unlike how the Persians were portrayed in the movie 300, which was completely inaccurate, in Prince of Persia, Dastan is actually a much more accurate portrayal probably of how a Persian warrior looked back in the ninth century. If we look at ancient drawings of Persian warriors, you'll see that they had long hair coming out of their helmets. And there's also a bit of elegance in his character, the fact that it's a bit greasy for the whole movie. I think it just makes it feel more authentic and that's why I chose him for the 21st spot. Okay, moving on to number 20. We're deep in the dirt on this one because it is a four-way tie between Nikki Six, Tommy Lee, Vince Neil, and Mick Mars in the movie The Dirt. So the Motley Crue band rocked epic mains in this Netflix original and any guy who wants to headbang, whether they're shouting at the devil or you know, rocking out to kickstart my heart. The only way to do that is you gotta go out the main. I could, this list would not be complete if I didn't include some rock and roll stars. Okay, cool. So switching gears now to number 19. We have the half Saxon, half Dane, who was betrayed by his Saxon uncle and raised by Vikings. We're talking about Uhtred, son of Uhtred, the rightful heir of Bebon Burr from The Last Kingdom. So whether he's rocking the half highball like you see here or the undercut bun, this is a warrior, he's a strategist, he's a lover, and he's a man on a mission to reclaim his home. And he's constantly finding that his loyalties are being yanked between Viking and Saxon and his value 
is always going unrewarded. But he is one of my all-time favorite characters because I believe he really represents what sacrifice and chasing your destiny truly means. So that's why he came in at the number 19th spot and he's in good company because he shares the spotlight with our next iconic male long-haired lead coming in at number 18. We have Ragnar Lothbrok. And, um, you know, seasons one through four Vikings, the, the, those are the seasons where Ragnar was in. Those are some of my all time favorite seasons. You know, the newer ones are still really good, but I don't know, it just feels like they lack the depth that was written into Ragnar's character, in my opinion. You know, he was a warrior, but also a philosopher at the same time. And some of my favorite scenes are when he was just alone and talking with King Ekbert. And, you know, his successful claim to his legendary fame did pass down to his four sons who carry on his name in in, in the later seasons but so moving back to his hair Ragnar's undercut braided mane in you know season one and two was an incredibly accurate representation of how historical Vikings used to wear their hair and it's also believed that many Vikings used to just seduce Saxon noble women because their hair was always well groomed and it was always bathed weekly so Vikings even though they were warriors they took hygiene very seriously and actually Vikings believed that anyone with short hair was believed to be a thrall or what they would call a slave in Viking culture. The long hair did represent strength, it represented honor, and it just represented a lot to the Viking culture. So moving on to number 17, we have our first demigod. I put here Loki. So why isn't Loki higher on this list? Well, you know, I just think it goes to show how epic this list still has to get. So, so his long dark hair just makes just the cunning trickery of Loki's character just seem all the more authentic. And I think it really helps make this role. I really can't picture a Loki with short hair. So his hair is finer and, and it's straight. So if you have fine, straight, dark hair, this is definitely a really cool look that you can rock. Okay, cool. Moving on to number 16, we have Hercules. So whether that's played by, you know, the Rock's rendition in 2014 or from the TV show in the 90s played by Kevin Sorbo, Hercules is the Roman name for the Greek hero Heracles, the Roman versus Greek mythology, but they're essentially the same character. You know, Hercules' father was Zeus, the king of the gods, and his mother was the mortal woman Alcmene that Zeus cheated on his wife Hera and bred Hercules. So Hercules is half god, half mortal, and he has incredible strength and stamina because of that in Greek and Roman mythology. So I think it's awesome that he's portrayed in Greek mythology with long hair and a beard. It just goes to show that he's a warrior type and whichever monster he's fighting he's doing it with his fierce mane okay let's move on to 15 coming in at the 15th spot we have jack sparrow you know this rum loving pirate is eccentric he's cunning and he just proves that long hair just isn't complete unless you rock a headband and a pirate's hat uh, he's also proof that chin straps can work if you braid the chin tails but jack sparrow's character introduced several ways to accessorize men's long hair he, he's shown very often with the beads, the braids, and the dreadlocks all in one. You know, he just shows you that your hair game just isn't complete without rocking some accessories. So yeah, that's why I included him at number 15. Number 14 goes to Aragorn, originally known as the ranger named Strider. He's eventually revealed in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Ring to be the heir of Isildur and the true king of Gondor. So he's very well known for his flowing mane and beard, and I don't think it's a coincidence that in Return of the King, when he is finally crowned, his beard and hair look even more epic than when he was just a soldier. So I think they did that on purpose just to show his promotion. And actually two more people who didn't make the list, but also deserve a mention, Gimli and Gandalf. <laughs> actually, you know, pretty much every single male character in Lord of the Rings have long hair. So <laughs> let's just lump them all in, you know, let's lump in the hobbits, let's lump in the elves, the dwarves, the wizards, and the humans. The Lord of the Rings, I don't think there is one character in that show, at least male character, who doesn't have long hair. It's just an epic showcase of manly mane. So coming in at number 13, we have Eric Killmonger from the Black Panther. And even though in the Black Panther movie, Michael B. Jordan's hair isn't incredibly long, it's still a little long, but it's not incredibly long. If you do go and actually look at the comic books, the Eric Killmonger featured in the comic books has super long, epic locks. And it's just a great contrast to Black Panther who has short hair. So I, I just think it, they do a really good job of playing that dynamic of giving Eric Killmonger really long hair. And it also goes to show it's not always the hero that rocks the long hair and you know the villain can too. So moving on to the 12th spot, we have Winter Soldier, aka Bucky Barnes. 
And even though he was brainwashed by the Russians to be a killing machine known as Winter Soldier, James Buchanan Barnes, AKA Bucky, he did spend the rest of his life trying to make up for the damage he caused as the Winter Soldier, you know, fighting side by side with Captain America. And fun fact, when actor Sebastian Stan was on set with comic artist Ed Brubaker, he asked him, why does Bucky Barnes have long hair? Why the long hair? And Ed Brubaker simply responded, well, when we draw these characters in comic books, long hair just looks more epic. <laughs> and, and I think Ed makes a great point, right? It looks more epic in real life too. Moving on to number 11, The Joker. Both portrayed by Joaquin Phoenix and Heath Ledger and both are also great examples of having long hair and mature or receding hairlines and still making it work. But I think the best part about the Joker that really sets him apart with his long hair is the green long hair. It really becomes a part of his uniform. It becomes a part of his intimidation. The way Joker looks is incredibly important to his character and how he's branding himself. And I don't think he would be the villain he is without the green long hair. It's a very symbolic part of his character. Okay, cool, moving on to number 10. Okay, we're getting in the top 10 now. Number 10 is Thor's right-hand man, <laughs> Heimdall. And Heimdall is the sole protector of the Bifrost, which is the bridge between Asgard and the other worlds and Earth. And you know, you could call him the guardian of the worlds. And such a huge responsibility can only be carried out by this warrior with an epic mane. So that's why Heimdall deserves the number 10 spot. And I really loved his performance in Ragnarok. I thought just his long hair just looked epic throughout that whole movie. Okay, cool. Number nine, we have John Wick. It's no coincidence that they make the most deadly assassin in history a long-haired legend. And in my opinion, his mane pairs perfectly with his stoic demeanor and his monochrome style. It's simple. You know, he's a man of few words, but he's a man of action. And I think the long hair just pairs perfectly with who he is. Even with who Keanu Reeves is, just as a person, is very similar to just the stoicism. And he's very soft-spoken, but when he does speak, people listen. So this is why I think John Wick deserved the number nine spot. Moving on, number eight, we have Geralt of Rivia. The Witcher actually inspired me to keep growing my hair out and I was getting ready to cut it back down to, you know, above shoulder length. You know, I thought my hair was getting a little long and then The Witcher dropped on Netflix and I was like, all right, I'm gonna keep growing it out for sure. And in the books, Geralt is known as the White Wolf. So I think that, you know, his white mane is super inspiration in the show on Netflix. And it also inspired a lot of, you know, half up, half down ponytail looks as the daily go-to for a hairstyle for guys. And it's just an inspiration to keep growing out your mane and, and having it look awesome and a goal to reach. You know, it also keeps your hair out of your face. You're still letting it down and you're letting it flow. Moving on to number seven, we have Jon Snow, AKA the King of the North, AKA Aegon Targaryen, AKA the one who should have killed the Night King, AKA the one who should have been King instead of Bran. But regardless of what you want to call him, I'm glad there's finally a curly haired hero that made the top 10, you know, outside of Heimdall, but Heimdall had uh, dreadlocks, um, but I'm sure he would have super curly hair if uh, he took the dreads out. So John's honor and character are what make him a great leader and why, you know, all the men around him chose to follow him. So I'm really excited and pumped up that such a great written character is a fellow long hair. So let's move on to number six. Number six, I chose to put in Tarzan. Because when I think about how a guy would look in his most primitive nature, right? If we didn't have the technology or an economy or jobs or social culture, and we all basically go back to being cavemen in our most natural evolutionary form, I think our hair might look something like Tarzan. You know, wearing a loincloth, having to survive in the jungle. We've obviously come a long way since our prehistoric predecessors, but I think there is an argument to be made here that long hair could be our most natural form. So now we are moving into the top five. At number five, I chose Samson. And I mean, what else is there really to say about this character, right? His hair was his strength. I don't know how much more symbolic you can get than that about long hair on guys. You know, whether the movie was good or not is up for debate, but the story of Samson is one of the most iconic long hair stories you can read. And for that reason, I put him in the top five. He's not as epic as this next 
one we have. Number four, we have Aquaman. So this epic mane is of this half man, half merman. You know, it just goes to show that men with long hair can still enjoy their beach days and not worry too much about salt water damage. And it shows that no one is too good for highlights. <laughs> so, you know, even though very few species of sea animals are mammals, although there are some, um, I still just Aquaman would not be Aquaman without his epic locks. I've been saying epic a lot. I think I'm gonna try and stop saying epic. <laughs> Number three, we have Achilles. So this was an amazing Greek warrior as portrayed by Brad Pitt in the movie Troy. And uh, the Achilles of Greek mythology was again, half God, half mortal, who was invulnerable everywhere except where his mother held him as a child, which was his Achilles heel. So because of his half God status, he was one of the greatest Greek warriors to ever live. Immortality, take it, it's yours. And he's known, you know, for de defeating Troy's greatest warrior, Hector. And it's also a really accurate portrayal. If you look at Homer's Iliad, Achilles is also portrayed there with super long hair. So I think that it just making Achilles a long haired killing machine is just awesome, in my opinion. And at number two, even though we've already paid tribute to Lord of the Rings, this list just wouldn't be complete if we didn't give Legolas his own spot. In my opinion, Legolas was the original Geralt of Rivia hairstyle. You know, he made the long blonde half pony look awesome. And it gave a lot of guys inspiration to grow their hair out beyond shoulder length. And additionally, we can see a few scenes from the Lord of the Rings where it's really fast. But if you look, I'll pull up a picture here where he has half pony and then he braids the ponytail. But I think that that could be a really cool look as well. And uh, he also has a braid on the side of his head too. And so I don't know, but when I think about long hair on men, I just, Legolas was just one of the first characters to come to my mind when putting this list together. I had to put him at number two. But before we get to our number one spot, I have to include our honorable mentions. And I'm just gonna run through this list really fast because there's 10 of them that you can argue should have made the list. But here we go. Qui-Gon Jinn, he deserves to be on this list. He's a Jedi, one of the most epic Jedis, and his long hair is awesome. Andre Layton in the show, Snowpiercer, which is a brand new show that just came out this year. But if you go watch Snowpiercer, I think it's on TNT, Andre Layton has the most epic, here we go again saying epic, the most epic dreadlocks. And it just, he deserves a shout out. I just saw his dreadlocks were phenomenal. And I'm really just glad that there's a show in 2020, they're putting guys with super cool long hair on the screen. Okay, this list would not be complete if we left a lot of characters from Harry Potter. Hagrid, Dumbledore, and Sirius Black, I think all deserve some recognition for their wizardly manes. And to the man who famously said, that's just like your opinion, man. Who was that? Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Big Lebowski's the dude. You know, we gotta mention him. You know, he deserves to be mentioned on this list. Also, if you ever seen the movie Velvet Goldmine, so the character Brian Slade, who loosely portrayed David Bowie's life, but he deserves a mention. I just think he's an epic representation of long hair on rock and roll stars. And keeping the rock and roll theme, the entire band from the movie Almost Famous, the fictional band Stillwater, there's there's a real band Stillwater, and then there's, in the movie Almost Famous, we have the fictional band Stillwater, but they deserve a shout out. Their rock and roll mains were awesome. And as we close out this list of honorable mentions, by basically shouting out every guy from the cult classic movie, The Warriors, if you just look at that, you know, every single guy in that group had awesome long hair and I had to include them in this list. So those are all the honorable mentions. And now we are moving on to the number one spot. Who is it? This should come as no surprise. Thor. I think whenever a guy imagines long hair, Thor is probably one of the first, if not the first, characters that comes to mind. And it's also no coincidence that in the movies, his hair did symbolize his strength. And this is very apparent in the movie Ragnarok when he becomes this gladiator-esque slave and he's forced to fight in the dome and he's fighting against the Hulk. And what's the first thing that they do when he becomes a slave is they strip him of his honor and his nobility and they take that huge razor saw and they shave his head. 
So that was very symbolic of him going from god to slave. And in Norse mythology, most of the male gods did have long hair. And even in Viking culture who worshiped the Norse gods, short hair did symbolize slavery. So when Thor's hair was cut in Ragnarok, this was a very symbolic way of showing that he became a slave and why his long hair looks even more epic when he's kicking Thanos' ass with Cap. Now don't you move. My hands aren't as steady as they used to be. By Odin's beard, you shall not cut my hair, lest you feel the wrath of the mighty Thor. <laughs> Please, kind sir, do not cut my hair. <laughs> no! No! And there you have it, guys. That was the whole list. What did you think? Whether you're a god or a demigod or a rock star, a warrior, a wizard, a king, superhero, a supervillain, or the guy that should have been king instead of Bran. <laughs> Long manes on men are one of the best ways to showcase your masculinity. I think we can put to bed the idea that men with long hair are somehow lazy or you know feminine or whatever, just insult, or even like what they think an insult is, right? What the person thinks they're saying is an insult. Just take five minutes and look at cultures all over the world, all throughout history, all throughout mythology, and just some awesome guys throughout cinema. So anyways, drop a comment, let me know who I missed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.